Welcome back to our podcast on Solid Ground. My name is Joe Boyle, and I'm the social media specialist here at Helicon. This is part one of our episode on home foundation inspections. I'm joined by our CEO, Jay Silver, as well as our guest, Leo Cannon from Barrel Engineering. So Leo, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm uh, one of the principals over at uh, Barrel Engineering and Inspection. We're a home inspection and structural engineering firm. Myself personally, I've been doing inspections now for about 24 years. Uh, professional engineer, licensed home inspector, licensed mold assessor. Very nice. All yeah, right. we're really excited to have uh, Leo yeah, with definitely. Barrel Engineering on the show. He has a very unique uh, niche home mm. inspector business because they both have the home inspector license paired with the engineering license. And I know it's come up a lot in our previous episodes when a you know a home inspector, how are they qualified to inspect the foundation and make these assessments that there is a problem or there isn't? Um, so we were really, really grateful to have him on the show. And uh, I believe Leo has what, 20 plus years experience over the, from wow. uh, back in the, I think you worked with uh, Naples, uh, the county down there yep. as an engineering, uh, some sort of inspector and uh, been with Benge Barrel Engineering over a decade now. So super excited to have him on the show and, and dive into some of these, you know, questions on, you know, I, I, I see some, you know, looks like foundation things. Do I need a regular home inspector? Do I, is there an engineering home inspector? So it does come up a lot. So we're, we're very uh, looking forward to jumping into this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <clears throat> All right. So let's get started. So can you explain what a home inspection entails and why it's important for both buyers and sellers? Yeah. So a home inspection is basically, what am I buying? Like you think about a home purchase is one of the most expensive things you'll ever purchase in your life. Um, car is up there. A car is probably the second most expensive thing you'll ever purchase. For a car, you spend hours researching online. You'll test drive. You mm -hmm. might go to three or four dealerships and price shop. So if it makes sense for your home, which can be three to four, th three to four times the amount of a car, you should get to know what you're buying. Do the due diligence. And we're there to do the due diligence. Very nice. And how does that differ from a commercial inspection? So a commercial inspection, like if I was buying the building we're currently sitting in, um, it's industrial, it's more open space, it's got more complicated AC system. So they're alike in that you're still hiring an inspector to crawl all over the building and tell you what's wrong with it. It's just the report looks different. Right. Okay. Is a foundation check part of the home inspection process? And if not, do you think it should be? It is and it isn't. So what sets Barrel aside from other home inspector companies is we're engineers. Mm -hmm. So it's like, the realm of the home inspector is we're going to tell you something's wrong. Realm of the engineer is we're going to tell you cause and origin. So we're going to tell you why something's wrong. Right. So where a regular home inspector might put their clients in a state of panic. Oh, you have an issue. You need a structural consult. Well, it's like I just hired an inspector. Well, you need a structural engineer to tell you about this. We set our, our clients' minds at ease because we have that level of depth. We're not going to refer a structural engineer after we find an issue with the foundation. Right. And what type of inspection services do you offer and how should someone go about finding a qualified and reputable inspector in their area? Well, with, with home inspection firms, there's always looking up online. I mean, you want to know if they're a member of one of the three main organizations out there that create standards for them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're members of InterNACHI. Um, that's the standards that we follow. So we have a set standards. From there, um, check the reviews. I mean, we have hundreds of Google reviews. Mm -hmm. um, we have 15 Yelp reviews. It's amazing. Those just keep disappearing. <laughs> uh, we're strong on Facebook. We're strong on Angie's List. We're strong on Home Advisor. Um, we're strong in those arenas. So check your reviews. Check the credentials. Uh, there's two different main types of home inspection companies. There is the guy or girl that retired from construction or doing mm -hmm. something else got their home inspection license, their significant other mans the phones, and that's the company. And then that's 98% of them. Then 2% of them are like us. We're an actual inspection firm. So we have multiple inspectors on staff, and that's what really separates us from most of the competition here. Interesting. Kind of very similar to in our business. You got, yeah. I guess you'd refer to the slang as chuck in a truck type uh, owner-operator, <laughs> uh, very limited depth. Uh, if something goes wrong, there's not whole lot of resources or, or back in there. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess the, the Google reviews and everything that goes for any type of service industry, um, check those, check the BBB, um, do your 
due diligence before hiring I uh, wouldn't, on the Spectre. I wouldn't recommend the Better Business Bureau nowadays. <clears throat> nowadays, what we, we find is the Better Business Bureau is for certain members of the elderly population who like to complain. So whereas in the past, the Better Business Bureau, which has been made obsolete by Google and Bing and all these other sources, you're only going to get a random complaint on the Better Business Bureau site. People aren't posting positive things on their sites anymore. So mostly if you find companies on the Better Business Bureau page, unless they're paying for the service, most of those companies will have negative reviews and slants. Uh, we've done a good job of keeping us neutral on the Better Business Bureau. But for that reason, it's like, if you want to complain about something, you think, oh, I'm Better Business Bureau. But if you want to praise something, you're like Facebook and Google and all these other review websites. Interesting. So can you share some common red flags or warning signs that an inspector should look for during a foundation inspection? Yeah, we teach real estate agents what to look for. Like we, we teach a course to real estate agents called um, major structure, major defects and how to spot them. And what I tell people is you, you're looking for cracks and everyone knows, yeah, we're looking for cracks. But the cracks that are most alarming to me are going to be about eight inches off the ground, horizontal with some bulging. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if you see that, um, that's underpinning. That means you're, because what happens is when you put your foundation together, you're going to have your, your footing underground and you're going to have your blocks that are connected with the rebar and then you have even more blocks. So when you have that bulge there, that means those two sections of blocks have disconnected and they're moving. So that right there is my telltale sign. I often joke to the real estate agent saying that if I see that within 10 to 15 seconds of being on an inspection, I then need to pretend to inspect for 40 minutes so they, they get value. That's how big of a warning flag that one would be. Okay. It's good to know. So it sounds like you, you work hand in hand with a lot of realtor mm -hmm. brokerages that uh, no barrel, they, you're their go-to for their home inspection. Uh, yeah, we services. try to educate our realtors. <clears throat> uh, we teach them that that whole course, uh, it's about an hour, hour and a half long, depending on questions. We'll teach mm -hmm. them what to look for for major defects before they put the offer in on the table. And the reason that course came about was that we had one real estate agent. I was in one of those networking groups. You know, you, everyone has a seat, sit around the table, trade business back and forth. Well, that person was using us for home inspection and he was a seller's agent. And we did the, we did the inspection for the buyer mm -hmm. and we destroyed the house. I mean, it was an elderly couple living in a 3,000 square foot house. They didn't even use half the house. There was a hole in the ceiling, in the roof, in one of the bathrooms. They never went in. Half the house was covered in mold and they didn't know about it. And we walked into the bathroom and basically we saw the, we can see daylight all the mold is there in the water. And like, in my mind, it wasn't, how did the homeowners not notice this? We know they're elderly. They only stick to one side of the house. How did the real estate agent not walk around this house to know what it was? Because this hole didn't just appear there. And she blamed me profusely for, for sabotaging her deal. I'm like, I didn't put a two inch hole in your ceiling. Mm. Wow. Speaking of sabotaging deals, Leo, I had a, uh, a situation recently where a, a realtor reached out to me. Um, the home inspector said they thought there might be some foundation issues. Mm -hmm. They brought in a, a, a competitor, a, a foundation repair company. Mm -hmm. They came in. The gentleman went around, I believe it was with a zip level. They proceeded to say that the back part of the house was out of sync or, or settled from their other points and they uh, put a $20,000 bid together to pin the back part of the house. Now, the seller is going like, what? The, like, the, I've never noticed any issues. The realtor also, who was uh, uh, confiding in me as a trusted advisor, was like, there's, there's no damage. The, if there is any cracking, it's actually on the front by the garage. Um, so they were kind of now in this... You know, the buyer is wanting this 20000 off to do this underpinning. The seller doesn't want to do it. They don't think they have a problem. Um, you know, what in that situation, what should the seller do? Um, so here's the dangers. of. In the, back in the day, we used to say, if you were a buyer, you don't want to hire us for your home inspection transaction. If a home inspector says, hey, get this checked out by a structural engineer, if you're looking to get money off your bill. You want to find those foundation companies. Back then, there was one doing it for $100. You would pay them $100. They would come out two to three weeks later. They'd give you a report for $17,000 to $25,000 worth of damage. That's what they did. You, you're hiring a foundation company to come out there and tell you something's wrong. So if you wanted something neutral, like if we find the home is collapsing or if we find the home is fine, we're not getting paid anything extra for that. So mm -hmm. I'm really big on preaching the neutrality of it. 
So, and, and I've said that before. They're like, well, this other firm will do it for like a hundred bucks. I'm like, yeah. And they're going to give you a $20,000 invoice at the end of it. And they don't believe us and they do that. And then they call us back and they're like, this firm gave us a $20,000 invoice. Can you come out here and tell us whether or not we need this work? And more often than not, we don't. It's like when people go to the doctor, you get your checkup when you're 45. And they basically, the doctor checks you out, does all this stuff that you've never had done to your body before. And I'm not looking forward to it when I hit 45. But <laughs> um, basically, when the doctor tells you you're perfectly fine, there's a little bit of depression that kicks in. You're expecting there to be mm. something wrong. You're expecting bad news. And when you don't hear that bad news, it, it negatively impacts you, even though you should be thinking, well, I'm fine. I'm healthy. But you're like, well, I wasted my time. I went to the doctor. I got this engineering firm out to check out my house. I paid this extra money for it. I need them to tell me something's wrong so it justifies my time and expense commitment. So it's, it's kind of weird in that that mm -hmm. good news can actually be emotionally damaging to some of our clients, which is still still mm -hmm. to this day astounds me. Yeah. yeah, in this case, the uh, the realtor, you know, I recommended them that, yeah, we can come back out there and take a look. And if we don't see any damage, we can recommend that it doesn't need any pins, but we are a competitor of that. So you may want somebody, as you mentioned, more in a neutral position. So I mentioned barrel engineering. Here's an engineer that you can have come out, give you a neutral assessment, whether this is needed or not. They went a little different route. They brought in a, a GC home builder who came in. They did a thorough inspection, said there's nothing here. And uh, I believe the buyer was okay with that. And they moved forward without the underpinning on the, uh, but it was very, you know, very uh, skeptical on, you know, how this underpinning was even needed when there wasn't any visual damage and I believe on the zip level it was off by like 0.2 which could be just I told them could be human error could be the machine could be so many things if you don't visually see it and you don't see the floor sloping and most likely the house is is stable <laughs> yeah we look for other signs it's like when I was doing sinkhole inspections the first thing I would do would walk into the kitchen and pour a glass of water I wasn't pouring it to drink I was pouring it to see if there was dirt in it because if the ground's moving the plumbing pipe from the street to your house, which is very weak, it would start mm -hmm. to crack. So I'm seeing if there's any dirt in that line. Um, we don't look just at the crack. Like I occasionally get the text from a realtor of a picture of a crack up close. I'm like, I can't tell you anything about that. Step 20 feet back and give me a picture. And there are some, like you said, there's some foundation companies out there. I get a, occasional estimates like they recommended one pin. And I'm like, what is one pin going to do? What is two pins going to do? I mean, you have to have a series of pins, maybe two pins if they're at a corner and they're six feet apart around the corner, maybe then. But like the occasional estimate, like, oh, yeah, just put one, or one pin there. You'll, you'll be fine. I'm like, that doesn't do anything. Exactly. Yeah. And you mentioned about uh, 45 years old, having to get your inspection done. And, and that uh, brings up kind of an interesting uh, episode that we're going to shoot next. So be sure to subscribe and follow along. It's uh, along the, the milestone inspections that are on buildings uh, 30 years and older, but uh, something that we'll jump into very hot topic right now with the condo associations and cooperatives. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. So if the buyer thinks there's some type of settlement issue, when should they bring in an engineer inspector? Well, I would say, why dance the issue? You've got home inspectors that can just tell you something's wrong. And then you've got home inspectors and engineers that can tell you something's wrong and why something's wrong. Why do the double expenses? Why put yourself through the timeline? You got to ask for extensions. You got to do all this. Just hire a firm that has both trades that they're using both trades on their inspection. Just start there. I mean, it's so much easier to say, here's something wrong and why versus here's something wrong. Now go find someone else to tell you why and how serious it is. It's just, it's nerve wracking. You're, it's already, I, I, I view buying a house as a part-time job. It's 15 to 20 hours a week and it's all hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait or you can't get financing when you do all this paperwork in. Hurry up and you've got to do your due diligence in seven days and then wait for an appraisal. It, it's all the hurry up and wait. So during those hurry up and wait chunks, why would you want to add even more work on your plate by having to coordinate multiple inspections or multiple inspection companies? Just get one company out there who's going to check for permits, check to see if they're expired, check the foundation, be able to tell you why things are wrong and really go in depth on that report. Right. So what happens if your home is now facing foundation problems after the initial inspection was officially officially certified with no issues for people who might be like dealing with that kind of problem maybe? Well, that's a 
tricky. Well, that takes me back to my neutral evaluation days. Um, so neutral evaluation is where the insurance company and the homeowner are in dispute on whether or not there's a sinkhole. And as we learned in 2018 in Land O'Lakes, sinkholes are so serious, $13 billion later in expenses, you don't want those disputes to be left up in the air. So the state wants engineers and geologists to step in and mediate that dispute to see if it's real or not. So the problem with engineering is everyone thinks engineering is black and white. Like either something is or it isn't. And they try and establish guidelines like substantial structural damage or five criteria on whether or not you're dealing with a gr substantial ground or a catastrophic ground collapse. They, they try to do that, but it's still subjective. So you really need to see what's going on in the big picture, the warning signs. Like, like I said before, does this home have a sinkhole? I'm pouring tap water. There's not a, there's not a single crack looked at there. I generally try not to look at the crack in question itself. If someone's telling me the back of the house is falling down, I'll look at the front of the house and see if there's lift. See if we have that. If you take a box and you push down on one side, the other side comes up. I mean, you look for the, the house as a system and you start looking at that. So if you're just looking at with blinders in certain areas, you'll miss things. And if you're not looking at the whole house as a system, mm -hmm. you could say something's fine when it's really not. That's a good point. So this is kind of a question for the both of you. How do foundation issues affect the overall value of a property? I'll take Whoever wants to take first. it first. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, well, that de depends. If it's left untreated, um, I'd say it's down to the, the scope and the magnitude of the problem. So if it's you know, one little corner that's settling down and maybe you need a, a system of six pins and the cost is under 10000 then that is going to have a much uh, lesser effect to the value versus, say, Palm Harbor, where we're mm -hmm. doing that massive cover collapse sinkhole right now. And there's a 20 foot uh, just hole right when you walk in the front door and the repair is an estimated amount to be 300, 400,000. It looks like um, now that we're we're out there, it's mm -hmm. taking a lot more grout than we expect, expected. So it probably will be 500,000. Well, if you left that untreated, <laughs> that's going to have a drastic effect, uh, probably just a catastrophic effect to where people are not going to want to touch that because they don't know, is it going to be 500? Is it going to be 700? You know, Lee and I both know that these are, these are estimated projections based on historical and experience, um, but you have these outliers to where they just go 100, 150% over the estimate. Um, so it, it, I would say it comes down to the, the extent of the damage, how much the repairs are going to be. Um, and then from there is, are you using a reputable, um, professional company to fix those repairs? That's backing their, their repair with a warranty. Um, possibly you look at their reviews online. How long have they been in business? Uh, how long have they been doing this type of work? What's their experience repairing, um, this, this type of problem, um, so it, it's, it's kind of a, uh, I know that's a real broad, uh, broad range there, a broad answer, but it, it really comes down to the severity of the, the foundation issue that you're, you're up against. Cause you know, as we had, uh, Rich K on the, the show from realtor, you know, we, no matter what you do, if you repair the house, you're going to have a small outlier of people that just want nothing to do with it. But the majority now they know Florida soils. The repairs have been going on since the late 70s, early 80s. They're tried. They're proven. Once they're done, the house, in my eyes, is more stable and on more of a solid ground than the houses next door to it. You know, for example, at that Palm Harbor, would you feel real comfortable buying one of those houses next door to that without some sort of testing? So to me, they would <laughs> even take a, a, a bit of a hit of the value. Um, but uh once they are repaired, I believe it that they are up to market value um, once the repairs are done. Um, but until that time, I would say that the value is decreased by the amount of the repairs. And then even then, add on a little bit because it's an estimate. Mm -hmm. So I would approach that question slightly differently. And as a video gamer, I'm going to use video game terms. <laughs> and the two I'm going to focus on is AOE and DOT. Um, AOE is area of effect and DOT is damage over time. So when we take into account those two concepts, damage over time gets worse logarithmically and increases its area of effect. So what that means in English is 
Um, let's say you have a problem with a gutter and a downspout going down the side of the building. And it, the, 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 the little kick out thing got kicked, lopped off by a lawnmower. And now the downspout is just shooting into the soil. So if you catch that at the beginning, your fix is a new elbow. But if that progresses, that shooting water is going to scrape the paint off the side of the building and start to move soil. And if you don't catch it there, then the fix there would be painting that one corner and putting in some soil. If you don't catch it soon enough, now you're now what happens is the foundation starts to shift downwards in that direction because all the soil is being kicked out. So now you've got to put soil in, compact it. If you don't catch it soon enough, you'll need to put pins in. But at the end of the day, and then you need to repaint that side, but now it's more cracks start to develop. So now you got to repaint the whole building. But at the end of the day, if you started with putting that $5 elbow in, it prevented when I'm now describing a whole house repaint, mm. elastomeric sealing of the cracks, underpinning, uh, possibly carbon fiber strapping on the blocks if they start mm. separating. And all of this, so one hand it's a $50 fix, and on the other hand it's a $25,000 fix. It just depends where on that curve, um, that damage over time curve, you're actually catching the problem. Right. Yeah, that really reinforces uh, what Leo was saying about addressing the problem right when you start recognizing it. If you let these foundation issues go, whether it's a sinkhole, whether it's erosion, um, the cost of repair starts to escalate. Not only cost, the complexity, um, and are you going to be able to get it back originally to the way it was perfectly? You know, they don't always, the repairs aren't always perfect. And then typically they're any imperfections are fixed in the cosmetic uh, phase after the foundation is stabilized. But even then they are still visible. So back to my example, if you're just fixing a gutter downspout, your inspector, your buyer is going to notice, oh, this is new. But if you're repainting that side of the building and you're using all the sealer, if the blocks have shifted and you're actually putting carbon straps to keep the building together, that's all going to be noticeable. And that's going to have a psychological impact on that buyer saying that we know there's a problem here. Now we want to know more information. It's kind of like when I'm teaching real estate agents like, especially in New Tampa, they planted all these laurel oaks. The laurel oaks only live 30 to 40 years. So what ends up happening, they also planted them between the, the driveway and the street where the sidewalk was. So it, it, it destroyed all the sidewalks. But now they're taking some of those trees out, and now the sidewalks are starting to sink into the ground. So everyone's like, oh, my God, sinkhole. No, you've, you've removed a tree. There's all this soft soil so I often tell real estate agents, if you're on a property and you've ever removed a tree, what you want to do is you want to have an eagle view or a, a, a Google view down showing the tree is there. Then you want, after the tree is removed, you want to put a flag in the ground saying tree was here. So when the home inspector is walking around and they find the soft depression, A, they don't break their ankle, but B, they don't say, oh, could be a sinkhole. It, no, it was a tree. It, it says tree was here. Here's your pictures. And then you, you set everyone's mind at ease. But that's another example of document, know what's going on, know what's going on in your property. Otherwise all this in, in real estate transactions, because so much is happening so quickly and it's so much money ever, the buyers tend to be easily frazzled, easily scared and very confused. You mentioned, um, Leo, about just going straight to a home inspector that has the PE credentials. Um, you know, just questioning that. How, how many options are there, though, for homeowners? Because I find it very, you're in a very niche, very rare that I see a home inspector that has a PE. I, if I can think of one, you may be the, probably the, possibly the only, the only one that I can think of that's doing the home inspection um, in this area. I'm sure there's others, but, you know, I, I just bring that up because I'm, I'm like, I, I agree with that. That would be great. But is, is there enough options for homeowners? Because sure. typically most of the realtors we deal with, they don't, have uh, engineering type uh, home inspectors available. So I know of three firms that include ours in the greater Tampa Bay area that have PEs. Okay. So, so there he are some. Here's, here's what you need to think. So your home inspection license and your PE license, professional engineering, are completely separate. So some of the organizations, I mentioned InterNACHI earlier, some of them say if you're a home inspector and a PE, their logic is, if you go out there as just a home inspector and you're just using your home inspector license and they find something wrong, they're still going to come after your engineering license. So if you think you're protecting yourself by not doing both, you're wrong. But at the same time, if you're thinking you're going to try and downplay the fact that you're an engineer, 
and you're just going to focus on that home inspection. Once people find out that you have that background, they want that expertise and they're willing to pay extra for it. So these, so the reason why we started, because we started off, well, we're just a home inspection firm. We're not doing engineering. We don't do design. We started that, but then very quickly it's like, well, you're, you've been an engineer, you've been a home inspector for five years, but you've been an engineer for 12. How does that work now? I try and explain the home inspection license didn't exist before 2011. And I try to explain that, but they don't hear that. They're just like, we know you're a PE. That's why we hired you. So it's like, why bother trying to just say, I'm just using the one license. So all three of the firms locally that have a professional engineer on staff are saying they're professional engineers that are home inspectors. We get held to the higher standard regardless if we're using the license or not. And you mentioned the people are willing to pay a premium. Yeah, I don't know if that's something you're willing to share, but maybe in round numbers, how much is, difference is it than a, I think the last home inspection I paid for, were they around $300 or $500? So you know, we are competitive for the category of home inspection report we <clears throat> produce. Um, there are three categories of home inspection reports. There is end of the report, you get a checklist. It's got, it's got X's in, in the appropriate areas, um, and that's it. And then you get your piece of paper at the end of the inspection, the inspector walked away. Thankfully, that type of inspection doesn't really exist anymore because of computers and cell phones and the ease of taking pictures. The second tier would be you get your report, same checkboxes, but at the end you get a, for lack of a better word, a vomitorium of photographs. They either do or don't have captions and you're, you're cycling back and forth through the report. You're on page four to read, okay, foundation issue. You're cycling through, you're on page 16, 17, where was that picture? You find one. Then you go to page 22 to find the next one. That's the second tier. We're of the category where you're getting a report and you're going to have defect photograph, defect photograph. It's all going to be linked together. For that category of inspection, we try to be priced in the middle of the batch. So when people say, hey, will you price match? We say no, because we don't know what tier they're Mm. offering on that inspection. Mm -hmm. Also, we have our things that make us unique that other firms don't. We have like the buyback guarantee. If we miss something and you said, I wouldn't have bought this house if this was on the report, we can buy the house back. No questions asked. The house gets bought back. Um, then it gets flipped and sold because the logic mm -hmm. there back when it was in existence, the logic was home prices kept going up. So paying you what you paid for the house, fixing the two or $300 thing, and then putting the house back on the market, there was profit to be made. So now that same guarantee because we do it through an organization has rules <laughs> can't mm, be a hundred year old house can't do this can't do that mm. but i mean it's still there and it's people can still use it mm. um so there's a buyback guarantee we have a 90-day warranty so if we miss something that's not mm. buy back my house level we have a 90-day warranty on certain items that we can send someone out there that's through that same mm. organization to get fixed so mm. things like this permit checks um things like that set us aside so we won't price match, but at the same time, we're going to be mid-tier pricing for that category of home inspection report. Yeah. Those are all really powerful guarantees, Leo. Thank you for uh, for sharing those. It does open up. Uh, Got to ask you now, how many <laughs> buybacks have you had to do over the last 10 years? We've had three threats in the past yeah, 10 okay, years. Okay. Um, we had one person who probably would have done it, except they tried to pull a fast one. They were a... They were mm -hmm. a they were a commercial flipper trying to buy a house to flip, and this is for a residential purchase only. So they didn't meet the criteria. When they got in there with their contractor for the estimates, it mm. blew up their budget completely. So they're like, they needed to back out of the deal. But when they filed the claim for the buyback, which was the only one that was actually filed of the three, it was yeah. like, no, you're a commercial flipper. That <laughs> you, you, you should have known what you were getting into and you should have gotten your estimates up front because they were coming at them like, well, this is the estimate for this and this is the estimate for that. I'm like, well, how do you, these estimates are dated from before the inspection report. <laughs> and these defects are in the inspection yeah. report. So, and then the organization that we had the buyback guarantee, they found the same thing. It was, it was, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. very, very powerful yeah. guarantee. And yeah, glad, right. glad to hear no, no buybacks yeah, no buy today. It uh, <laughs> reminds me of our, our, uh, our warranty and you know i've said on the show countless of times we we haven't had to do any warranty claims yet you know knock on wood yeah. um but it is there um the guarantees are there for peace of mind and just showing mm -hmm. the professionalism of, of barrel and helicon we we back our work with a guarantee right yeah mm -hmm. we back it with several it's just important yeah. to do that it, and it's 
It's a difficult, the home inspection realm is a very, and I've said this for years, a very difficult arena. You're hiring a generalist to inspect mm-hmm. HVAC, plumbing, mechanical, addict, roofing, foundation, and just overall home health. You're hiring a generalist to do that. You're telling them they have to do it within a certain small period of time, and you're expecting them to find everything. That formula is one set up for disaster. So there are certain things built into all the contracts for home inspectors. They're not technically exhaustive. That means that they're not going to hire a plumber, an electrician, uh, HVAC. It, it's the, the, the statutes and the organizations, re, they know that this is generalism. And that's where our edge in the engineering world comes in because we exceed generalism for foundation and structure. And those are the areas you like the two most important uh, expensive pieces of your house are going to be your roof and your foundation. Mm-hmm. So we take it from a stance of we're going to give you that above and beyond for the most expensive thing that can go wrong in your house. And then we're also specialized in roofing. Like we don't do roofing, but we specialize in roof inspections and roof design. So we're covering the two most expensive things above and beyond what a normal home inspector would do. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know about you, Joe, but I'm. It looks like I'm going to be paying a premium and higher right. barrel for my uh, home inspection needs moving forward because I've just been like the masses, just use general, general home inspectors to date. Um, but I, I definitely uh, see the value and the guarantees behind it. Um, oh yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, to finish up, um, Jay, I just want to ask you, what are some pro proactive measures homeowners can take to prevent foundation issues from arising in the first place? Just for those who want to know. Um. Well, there's uh, before building and and once the house is built. I think Leo mentioned some about drainage. Right. Make sure your your drainage is directed the water away from the foundation. It's not eroding right next to the foundation for long periods of time, which can gro- cause washout, settlement, all sorts of other shifting in the block. Um, now, before the house is built, and and we've stressed on this m- many a times. Spend twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred and get a soil study done. Get an engineering, a geotech engineering report to see: Are there any organics there? Are there any clays? Um, what's the what's the load bearing capacity of the soil look like? Is it going to support this nice custom home that I'm building? Um, and that little bit of ounce of prevention, um, gosh, can save you could be hundreds of thousands of dollars by just in the beginning doing either some pre uh, ground improvement or soil stabilization or putting in a piling system, whether that's what we like helical piles or kind of the, the, the long uh, been around a little bit longer would be timber piles. Um, but uh, I, I think the, the most important to avoiding foundation issues on your new build is get this to- the soil tested, get an engineering report mm-hmm. done and see, it might come back and say, oh, no, the dirt is good. It's strong. It's going to support your house. You're not going to have any problems. But if they do find something, it can save you a significant amount by addressing it before that structure is put into place. And, and I like to approach it from this standpoint. It's like, I'm going to buy a printer for my house. Um, I'm going to spend how much time researching it? I mean, do I want one that's an inkjet, a desk jet, a laser jet? Do I want one that can scan? Do I want one that can fax? Do I even know anyone that has a fax machine? Uh, do I even have a line to hook up to the fax machine? But I'm going to spend, what, 20, 30, 40, maybe even 50 hours researching printers. And the printer is, what, two to $300 purchase? Um, am I going to spend $500 to know what my $400,000, which is the average house cost? Do I want to spend five hundred dollars to know what my $400,000 purchase is? And when I hear people say they don't want to pay for a home inspection, it's just baffling. It's like I, I've seen people in, in a in a grocery store, spend 20 minutes looking at oranges to find the perfect orange. Y- y- it's just astounding. It's like the penny wise pound foolish thing just is exemplified during this home purchase process. You shouldn't skip out on the inspection. Know what you're buying. And, and insurance companies now are getting tighter on forcing people to have some level of inspection. They're forcing people to have four point inspections, which is a condensed version of a home inspection, but it's trying to catch. Is your roof okay? Is your plumbing installed okay? Is your electrical damaged? Does your air conditioning work? It's just a very simplified inspection, but the insurance companies are trying to force people who are buying homes more than 20 years old to at least the insurance company wants to know what they're insuring. Mm -hmm. So they're trying, but I mean, yeah, it's just, if you're asking yourself, do I want to get this inspection done? Do I not? It's like, I don't want to, I go to, I go to the movies. It's a 13, $15 ticket to 
tickets, $30, bucket of popcorn. I'm at like $50. I'll read 50 Rotten Tomato reviews before I decide if I'm <laughs> going to go see the movie. It's like the, the, what people will not do when they're going to spend $400,000 on a house. It just amazes me. Yeah. It's it yeah. baffling. All right, that wraps up our podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. And make sure to check out part two of this episode coming up soon on Milestone Inspections.